Hey there, FTV fam. This is Khalil with another video. We're going to take a look. Um, it says here that Andrew Tate's prosecutor reveals why he is dangerous. Um, of course, Andrew Tate is a man of influence. We, he himself talks about this a lot. And this is why they're trying to silence him and shut him down and all that kind of stuff. Right? We know the Tate story. Um, again, sorry myself for all of the... Um, the, the victims or the alleged victims of the, of what's taking place, regardless of all the fanfare around the celebrity Andrew Tate, there are actual lives that are impacted by this story. And so because of that, I'm just going. All right, cool. Let's take a look. <laughs> You're getting closer to the truth. Keep looking into this. Ask the politicians, ask the judges. You're getting closer to the truth. We have an update for you on Andrew Tate. One of the biggest questions that we focused upon is why are Tate and his brother Tristan continue to be locked up in Romania? Give you a brief reset here. We know that the social media star and former kickboxer, his brother, and two others were arrested in late December on human, human trafficking and rape charges. Prosecutors allege the defendants, quote, created an organized crime group with the purpose of recruiting, housing, and exploiting women by forcing them to create pornographic content meant to be seen on specialized websites for a cost. They described how there are six alleged people or six alleged victims who were sexually exploited and that, quote, an injured person was forced on two different occasions by a suspect through the exercise of physical violence and psychological pressure to have sexual relations. Now, when Andrew and Tristan were arrested at the end of December, a judge had granted prosecutors request to extend their detention by 30 days. The brothers appealed. It was denied. And most recently, as we reported here on Sidebar, the judge extended that detention another 30 days to February 27th. So we were trying to understand why. Well, now the judge is explaining why. Let me bring back in Romanian lawyer, Stefan Loridan, who is our expert on this matter. Stefan, it's great to have you here. I'm going to get right into it. So the judge issues a written statement, and what he describes is, quote, the particular dangerousness of Andrew Tate and Tristan in terms of their ability to target women. One quote is, their capacity and effort to exercise permanent psychological control over the victims including by resorting to constant acts of violence. Judge considers them to be the culprits rather than the traffickers who obtain huge profits from exploiting them. And then outlined some of the behavior like the lover boy method, which we talked about as a way to entice women. What did you make of the statement from the judge? So this is actually not the statement that the judge has made. It's actually the statement that the prosecutor has made with his request of extending the arrest for 30 days. In which, of course, with which, of course, the judge accepted and he agreed with since he accepted the prosecutor's request for the 30 days extension. So let me get this straight. This is not the judge's words. Not this the is judge. The prosecutor's That's the words that prosecutor. the judge okayed and signed off on. Exactly. Exactly. This is the, the prosecutor's argument for why he requested from the judge the extension of 30 days. And he had two main points. This is the first one that you just spoken about, you, saw, you told us about. And the second one will be that they are, uh, um, they present like a flight risk escaping the country. And he actually, the prosecutor actually showed the judge a video where Andrew Tate says that he has 19 passports and he owns citizenship in Nigeria, in Estonia, in UK, in USA, right? So that's it. Here's my concern. Here's my concern. I'm looking at this, and correct me if I'm wrong, doesn't the statement say that prosecutors hadn't fully clarified the facts of the case, but in the statement, it did not eliminate, quote, a reasonable suspicion that the defendants had committed the crimes that they were being investigated for? Because from an outside perspective, right, Andrew Tate has said they're just being locked up while they look for evidence. If I'm reading this statement, there's a lot of allegations but to see that the prosecutors haven't fully articulated what the facts are, that makes me nervous. Am I looking at it the wrong way? <laughs> no, you are definitely not looking at the wrong way. What you also need to understand is that the prosecutor might actually have a lot of evidence that he's holding back, and he only presented a few of them, which was enough so far to be able to put them under arrest for 60 days and to, uh, to ask for a two extension time, so 30 days one time, and then an extension of 30 days. 
but he might actually have a lot of evidence. I would also add to that the fact that he's, he has ongoing investigation and he's going on multiple levels in terms of uh, trying to gather further evidence. We spoke about the fact that he ordered multiple rights in different locations in Romania, locations that are owned by Tate Brothers, and then other locations which were supposedly owned by some of their business partners, right? Which means that there's a lot of, a lot of more evidence on the way, if you will. But they have do prosecutors have to show something new every 30 days to justify the continued detention? Yes, actually, they have to show new evidence or they need to prove that if they are going to be set free, it will be a threat for the investigation, which he did in the second time. And, and just clarify what you mean by that, because uh, on your la- on our last talk, you had said that the judge could keep extending this for 180 days until they maybe the trial starts. What did you just mean by that, that, um, you know, in terms of that justification by the prosecutors? Yeah, so. The prosecutor has to bring new evidence, just like we discussed, right? Or he has to prove the fact that putting the suspects into freedom would lead to put the, yeah. the investigation being affected, right? And in this mm-hmm. case, he, you see, you see, because in this case, he argued the fact that if they're going to be set free, they're either going to free the country or exercise control and psychological pressure on the victim and influence their statements. See, it's just so. Yes, I can see that in the United States. It's that's one of the Absolutely. considerations, you know, flight risk. It, there's also, you know, there could be a um, an order put in place that you cannot step in a certain amount of feet within uh, a vic- alleged victim. You have to cease all contact. It wouldn't necessarily be a grounds to lo- keep someone detained. It's just a little different. I am curious, though, is there something in this statement that says the reason they're behind they're locked up as well is due to social tensions and the public order because a lot of people have thoughts on this what does that mean that that they're feel i don't know what that meant 100 percent. in fact if you remember the first judge that ordered the that accepted the 30 days arrest period he stated that one of the reasons why he accepts this arrest period is that because they are popular persons and so there's a lot of social media uh, presence and news media presence and eyeballs on the case and setting them free will create social insecurity. And he doesn't want that, right? Now, if you ask me personally, I feel like right now there's a narrative building up where two of the allegedly six victims are coming up and they're saying that, oh, we are in this case against our will and that's the, uh, the prosecutor is corrupt, the legal system is corrupt. And there's a lot of pressure on the legal system, right? And back to my point, I feel like the prosecutor's reputation is on the table. And more than that, if they would be set free right now, then it means that the narrative is confirmed and that the, the, the judge and the prosecutor will accept that the legal system is corrupt uh, and uh, you know it will make them look bad, in my opinion. That seems like more of a PR concern than a legal concern. You're locking two people away who haven't been convicted of anything. There's, like they say, reasonable grounds or suspicion that they did something. But because of and, – and by the way, you tell me if you th- – I think I'm off here – I think it was public pressure that they released this statement. I think it was everybody online saying, well, why why continue to lo- keep them locked up? And they're looking at social media. They're looking at the media. They're looking at news and saying, oh, we have to issue some statement, some sort of justification, which I will tell you, I don't know, makes me a little uneasy. Yeah, that, they are also expanding right now the charges. At least the prosecutor is in the process of finding out if there's money laundering involved as well. And we might find... It might, it, in my prediction is that in the next coming days, we are going uh, to see Tate Brothers facing money laundering for real. Uh, so that's another uh, um, crime that is punished with uh, 3 to 12 years. And there are some others maybe in, in the future. So Andrew Tate's social media account continuing to write about what's happening to him and having followers respond back and whether or not people are supporting him. That is all having a direct effect on their continued detainment, correct? I would say so. That's my personal opinion, at least. Um, and there was also another uh, allegation put into the statement that the Tates uh, forced women to work continuously for 12 hours with only a five minute break. It feels like they're articulating a little bit more of the details than we knew before. What did you make of that? Well, I know that there are new. Uh, so, again, the prosecutor is going after older case files. I'll just give you the quick example, right? 
it seems like like two years ago, one of his employees, like one girl from the video chat from the camp business, uh, has escaped the the location and went to the police station. He wa- she wanted to make a complaint, and then the police station escaped called Georgiana, which is another employee of Andrew Tate, a former policeman, right? And uh, because they knew each other, right? And then the victim complaint wasn't taken in consideration. Now, fast forward to two years, the prosecutor probably talked with the older victim, and now he went to the police, and now he's also investigating the policeman and the police station for keeping the case file for two years locked without doing anything, if that makes sense. I, I got to tell you, you know, I'm not trying to defend uh, a- a- Andrew Tate. I mean, the allegations are right. serious, but I am a facts and evidence right. guy, and I do believe in everyone's rights. So looking at what we're seeing here, it's just a little different than what we see. But Stefan, thanks for taking the time, showing us what this means and what it doesn't mean. And as their new developments, again, would love to have you back on. Sure. Thanks for having me. And that's all we have for you here on Sidebar, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us. Please subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, wherever you get your podcasts. I'm Jesse Weber. Thank you, Jesse Weber. All right, guys. Hey, guys, come on, man. Like, this is Mr. Tate. His life just doing what it does. What I'm actually thinking about is what happens in the event that the prosecutor does not have enough evidence to like, oh gosh. Cause what happens is Andrew Tate comes out saying, see guys, I told you, right? And then he, they throw more more um, gasoline on this guy's fire, man. But hey, we will just uh, sit back and wait and see where this um, conversation goes. It's just crazy. Sad. Sad, 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 sad. What does it profit a man to gain this whole world? All right, everybody. Thanks so much. Really appreciate you taking the time. This is Andrew Tate. A prosecutor reveals why he is dangerous. He's a flight risk guy. You can see the flight risk for sure. And he could be psychologically intimidating. That's not a question. I've been covering this guy for a little bit. But in either case, yeah. All right, let's keep it going. Keep the take train going. Da-da-da-da-da-da. All right, this is Khalil. You guys take care. It'll be good.